Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Isaac. How are you? Good afternoon, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. How are you, sir? How was your Easter? Oh, it was wonderful. How about yours? Yeah, it was good. Different good church. A bit different, but it was good. A bit different. How was it different? Like <laughs> uh, I didn't go to church. Yeah. Without church Easter, yeah. First yeah. Easter without church. Pretty strange, yeah. That's pretty yeah. strange. Yeah, so uh yesterday morning I got up early so it uh like around 4 30 in the morning you could hear the azan and it was doing all of that and then i heard outside out back of my house there were christians yeah. singing awesome. oh. they were singing resurrection songs and clapping their hands no musical instruments they were just singing in somebody's house it was so okay. beautiful oh my gosh yeah and, uh, so inspiring so they were actually breaking the rules but Wow, pretty awesome. Yeah, but if four or five people are doing it, so it's okay, I guess. Ah, right. Uh, for, yeah, just a morning uh, service, sunrise service. It's good if you, you know, like 
less than 10 people are doing it so it's fine yeah it's very beautiful yeah. okay so um martina was on for a second then she dropped out yeah You're i guess there. because of her internet or something maybe so here's the deal uh i had two people in my 11 o'clock class and it may be because people just assume that since it's easter monday we weren't having class but yeah for me, it's like we've had so many classes stolen from us because of cricket yeah and so i was like i i, I can't do it i just can't do it anymore I, I just can't handle this too many stolen classes so yeah. the question is do we go ahead with class now i think so people can still watch it online yeah youtube yeah, so Martina, are you there? <laughs> she was. <laughs> no, she's not. She was there. Yeah, she's not. Yeah. Pretty awesome. The book's there. That's a good thing. Okay, then we're going to pray. And Martina will probably join us. And that's probably going to still be the three of us. That's all right. God's here. Father, I ask in Jesus' name to please administer to all nine students. I pray for Majid, who is on his motorbike coming to FC College right now. To get something, I pray, please keep him safe all the way, Lord. I pray there will be no danger or problems in any way. I ask God that you will minister to him richly and bless him. I pray, Father, for Musa's uncle, who is in the hospital, that you please would protect him, Lord. Show him your mercy and heal him. I pray for my pastor, Asif's brother who is i think he's in intensive care in the hospital in new york city and he's not a believer i pray he would come to your salvation lord i ask god that you would please bring him to your salvation and that he will not die apart from you so i pray that you would just show him your mercy i ask god that you would please work in uh, Pastor Asif's brother, that he would come to your salvation and know you. Pray for the students who are all a part of this course. You'll keep them safe, Lord, please. And I pray that they'll grow to know you. And I pray specifically for Martina and Isaac that you will bless them this afternoon as we go through this um, PowerPoint. And I pray for everyone who watches it, that you will teach them and admonish them and encourage them and build them up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're in a PowerPoint. Other passages about Jesus and the law. So what we're gonna do is just look at some passages and our goal is to figure out how, how do we deal with, with the law? You know, how, as Christians, how do we deal with the Old Testament law? And so we're just gonna look at some other passages. Okay. Jesus and the Sabbath, part one, picking heads of grain on the Sabbath. I'm going to show you this story that's just pretty surprising. So on the Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to make their way, picking some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Okay, now I want to show you this. That's not what I want to show you. I'm going to show you this. While the Israelites were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses, Aaron, and the entire community. They placed him in custody because it had not been decided what to do to him, what should be done to him. Then the Lord told Moses, this man is to be put to death. Gosh, the entire community is to stone him outside the camp. So the entire community brought him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord had commanded Moses. So, so we've got this really clear teaching that somebody broke the Sabbath picking up sticks. I don't know. That doesn't sound any different than picking heads of grain. It's a little different. But as far as a Jew would be concerned, no. He's breaking the Sabbath. And so they put him to death. So the question is, 
Why does Jesus allow his disciples to pick grain on the Sabbath? Sabbath is central law. I'm telling you what. God punished Israel, sending them into exile. And one of the reasons he sent them into exile was because they had broken the Sabbath for so many years. I showed you guys last week that Sabbath can mean more than just Saturday or Friday night to Saturday night. It means more than that. Sabbath can also be there's a Sabbath year. Um, every seventh year has a Sabbath to it. And every 50th year is a Sabbath year called the year of Jubilee where all debts are forgiven. and Land is given back to people. So Sabbath is really important. But the Sabbath day, Jeremiah said that they were sent into exile because they had broken the Sabbath so often. Happy is the man who does this. Anyone who maintains this, who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it, keeps his hand from doing it. So Sabbath is important to Isaiah. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not follow my statutes and they rejected my ordinances. The person who will live, who does them, will live by them. They also profaned my Sabbaths. So I considered pouring out my wrath on them in the wilderness to put an end to them. However, if you listen to me, says the Lord, and do not bring loads through the gates of the city on the Sabbath day and consecrate the Sabbath day and do no work on it, kings and princes will enter through the gates of this city. They will sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and horses uh, with their officials, the men of Judah and the re residents of Ju Jerusalem. The city will be inhabited forever. Now, this is Jeremiah. Jeremiah is at the end, right before Jerusalem falls to the Babylonians. And look what God says. If you guys will start, I'm just asking you guys one thing, just start observing the Sabbath. Just do that. And you guys will be delivered. But of course they did. But the point is, the Sabbath was that important to God. So Jesus gives unexpected answers to the Pharisees who accuse his disciples of breaking the Sabbath. They're breaking the Sabbath. They're not allowed to take those grains. It's definitely forbidden in the law. So the question is, why is God allowing this? Okay, Jesus allowing this. He told them the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Sharon, is that you? How about that? Miracle upon miracle. Welcome to class. I hope you're able to connect. Not connected. I'm going to text him for a second here. So, Sharon, can you hear me talking? If you can, figure out how to look at the chats and see if you can respond to the chat. If you can't hear me talking, then this is kind of a waste. All right. I don't think there's anything I can do to help. Let me see if I can. Okay, we're just going to have class and just hope this shrink can figure it out. I don't know what to do. Let me see. Let's see if I can WhatsApp him.
Okay. Jesus. Jesus gave unexpected answers to the Pharisees. He told them the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. This is absolutely, absolutely world changing. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So let's do the context. He is telling them this, okay? He's telling them this when his disciples are breaking the Sabbath. They are getting grain of wheat and they're doing this to them and then they're eating them. So they're getting the grain off and they're, and they're eating and doing this and eating and doing and eating it. And they're not allowed to do that. It's definitely breaking the Sabbath, clearly breaking the Sabbath. And Jesus' his first answer of the two answers he gives the Sabbath was made for man and not men for the Sabbath, which means what, Isaac? What does that mean? Uh, I guess it's mean that uh, because Jesus is saying that it is not compulsory for man to follow Sabbath that much. Sounds like it. What? Because it was made for man, not man. For like, man's purpose is not to obey Sabbath. But to uh, but other purpose as well to worship God, not only Sabbath. I guess so. That's excellent. That's excellent. So hello, Sharon. So Martina, do you have anything to add to that? In Jesus saying this. Okay. No, sir. Okay. Do you realize when Jesus says this, that he is making a statement that is completely changing the relationship of the Jews to the law? When he says the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, what he's saying is what Isaac said. That means, therefore, that the Jews were not required to keep the Sabbath if there was a benefit that they needed, like eating food. Okay, so we eat it, watch it in its context. We're not talking about breaking the Sabbath for fun. We're not talking about breaking the Sabbath just to enjoy ourselves. We're talking about breaking the Sabbath because we're hungry. And apparently Jesus is saying that if you're hungry, you can break the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath was made for the man and not man for the Sabbath. That is world changing for all of the Jews. So Jesus allowed us to Yes, somebody's talking. Isaac. Uh, yeah, sir, I have a question that uh, it was like lawful, even if you're doing it for your benefit, like before Jesus, I guess. Ask your question again. Like, uh, was it lawful, uh, lawful to, you know, obey Sabbath, if, even if you're hungry? Like, you don't uh, need to do anything uh, for your own benefit on Sabbath. Even if you are, like, uh, injured or you are, you know, like, you are hungry. So, Jesus changed that after, like, after saying that or it was, it was uh, you know, interpreted wrong by Jews before Jesus? Excellent, excellent question. No, Jews interpreted it correctly. They were correctly interpreted. Yes. You can break the Sabbath for certain things. For example, you can feed your animals. Okay, you can do that. So the farmer can feed his animals. He can milk his cows, which of course he has to. He can milk his goats because he has to. Yes, absolutely. So you don't, you don't make your animals suffer. If, you're, if some bad thing happens, somebody is injured, you can take care of that. So you are allowed to do that on the Sabbath. Um, Somebody's sick, you can care for the sick, etc. You feed your children and you, you know, yes, but you're not allowed to cook on the Sabbath. You needed to cook everything the day before. On the Sabbath, you eat cold food. Um, so it's not a misinterpretation. It's an excellent question. The Jews were correctly understanding the Sabbath. What Jesus is saying is that, and, and then this brings us back to think again when Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So apparently, it's not that the Jews misunderstood it, but it's just that Moses 
applied it more strictly than Jesus did. And I want you to understand this. This, this will make perfect sense. Remember how we talked about divorce? And Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because of the hardness of your hearts. But this is not the way it was in the beginning, Jesus says. So Moses permitted you to do something that wasn't great, divorce your wives, because he knew that you people are so hard-hearted that you just wouldn't be able not to. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. That's what he says. That's what Jesus says. Here, we have the same kind of thing, and it's Moses wouldn't let you do any work of any kind unless it's feeding your animals or milking your animals or protecting somebody, you know, but uh, not cooking, not gathering, those kinds of things. He wouldn't let you do those things. Why? Because if he allowed you to make exceptions because you say, well, I need this, the people would go crazy. They would make exceptions for everything under the sun. In other words, when you have a nation of two and a half million people and you say, well, you need to always rest on the Sabbath except when you don't need to because the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The people would have not obeyed the Sabbath hardly ever because they would always make exceptions for themselves. They would always give themselves special privileges and they would say, well, it's built into it because the Sabbath was not, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. And so you see what's going on is Moses had to make that law stricter than it needed to be. And the reason he made it stricter was because he knew, God knew, that the people could not handle the kind of, the man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was for man. That philosophy is just way, way, way too loose to run a whole nation. Does that mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm, what I'm saying is kind of crazy. Yeah, but it makes perfect sense because they were rebellious being in exile for 400 years. So they were pretty changed at that time. They were different from the time when Jesus came. Yes. And remember, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no. I'm... Remember, we're talking about real righteousness as opposed to righteousness that keeps us in the land of promise. Remember, the law of Moses is so that they can stay in Canaan. That's the only reason the law of Moses is there. The law of Moses is here are the basic rules that you as my covenant people, you must obey these rules, Hebrews, and if you don't obey these rules, I'm not going to let you stay in the promised land because this land is my land. It's not yours. And so you have to run by my rules, not your rules. Here are the basic rules that you Hebrews have to follow if you're going to stay in my land. And if you guys don't follow these rules, I'm kicking you out. But these rules are not about righteousness. The rules Jesus gives are about righteousness. Jesus gives us the real righteousness, the righteousness that Jesus himself fulfilled in everything he did. And so when Jesus said he didn't come to destroy the law, but fulfill it, part of fulfilling it is to make sure we understand how the law applies to the kingdom of God. And in this particular case, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. God had commanded Sabbath breakers must die. Jesus said, however, that the Sabbath was God's command he created to benefit humans. Jesus explained that when the Sabbath commanded humans discomfort, it could be disobeyed, and that's revolutionary. I just want to say that I observe the Sabbath, sort of. I mean, I sort of, I mean, I wash the dishes on the Sabbath. I cook on the Sabbath. And, but I never do any schoolwork. And the reason I do, and this, this is, I do not believe that we're expected as believers to follow a Sabbath. And by the way, Sabbath is really Friday and Saturday, but Friday night and Saturday day. But I, the reason I do it is because of this verse. This verse really does make me do it. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. That verse is really interesting because now following the Sabbath is not just, this is the will of God, Moses says, 
but following the Sabbath is also, it's a really good idea. It was made for people because people needed it. So I follow the Sabbath. I do cook on the Sabbath, which is sort of like relaxation for me. I cook on the Sabbath. I made ice cream yesterday, it was awesome. I made pizza yesterday, it was awesome. So I cook on the Sabbath and I wash the dishes on the Sabbath. And of course I prepare sermons on the Sabbath, but I don't work. I never do FC college work ever on the Sabbath. And on, on Sunday, it's not really the Sabbath. And I never do any other work. And I won't, I don't want to talk about COVID-19. We never talk about it on Sundays. I never want to hear that word. And I never talk about work with my wife on Sundays. Never. Because the Sabbath is made for man. So it's not a bad idea. You don't have to obey it. It doesn't make you righteous. If you obey it, you're not better. If you disobey it, you're not worse. But for me personally, I need the rest. And so that's what I do. If you don't do it, no problem. But I need the rest. So you might notice that when you write me emails on Sundays, I never answer them. I, never even, I don't even look at my phone on Sundays. Most of the time. So any questions about this absolutely revolutionary teaching of Jesus here? Any questions? So is the law about the Sabbath, is it for Christians? Or is it not? I guess so. It is not compulsory, but we can follow it for our own benefit. Just as you said. Like, Shuren, it is made for man. It's made for man, which is interesting. Shuren, what do you think? Yeah. According to Jesus, do Christians need to obey the Sabbath? So I think that uh, we need to obey the Sabbath because one day rest in a week is very important. It is important. It's really helpful. However, mm -hmm. if we don't obey it, is that a problem? Sir, it can be a problem because uh, we won't receive our blessings and our prayers won't be that much answered because if we don't obey the word. So then that means that the Sabbath then becomes something about the law then because if blessing is involved with it, now all of a sudden we have to worry about if we don't obey the Sabbath, that God won't hear our prayers as well. Hmm. Okay, so then we need to go someplace else and how fun that is. Let's do it. Okay, first five. One person considers one day to be above another day. Someone else considers every day to be the same. Each one must be fully convinced in his own mind. Whoever observes the day, observes it for honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. Whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat it. Yet he thanks God. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Hmm. So here Paul says, one person in verse five up here considers one day to be another, above another day, all right? But someone else considers every day to be the same. And then Paul says this amazing statement. Each must be fully convinced in his own mind. So one person says, ah, I'm, I'm obeying the Sabbath. So Shurun says, I'm going to obey the Sabbath. Isaac says, I can obey the Sabbath. I have work I have to do. So Isaac is convinced that the gospel teaches that he does not have to obey the Sabbath law. He can please God without obeying the Sabbath law. Shurun is convinced that he needs to obey the Sabbath law so that God will bless his prayers. According to Paul, as long as Sharun is convinced in his own mind, and as long as Isaac is convinced in his own mind, there's no problem either way. They're exactly in the same place. Whoever, whoever observes a day, 
observes it for the honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eats for the Lord since he gives thanks to God. Whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat it. Yet, he thanks God. And as far as God's concerned, it's not a problem either way. Now let's look at another passage in the same, not the same chapter, but the next chapter. Nope, it's not in the next chapter, it's in this chapter. Okay, verse 13. Therefore, let, let us no longer criticize one another. Instead, decide never to put a stumbling block or pitfall in your brother's way. Martina knows about this because we were just looking at this in 1 Corinthians 9. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. Still, to someone who considers a thing to be unclean, to that one it is unclean. So what he's saying here is we, this is talking about clean and unclean, but it's the same principle. If a person thinks something's unclean, for him it's unclean. But the person who doesn't think it's unclean, it's not unclean for that person. And so we have to be sure that we don't judge another person for what they do because they can do it unto Jesus. A person can observe the day for Jesus and a person can not observe the day for Jesus, and both of them can be pleasing to God equally. That's what Paul is saying. Any comments or questions about that? Shrun, what do you think about what Paul said? Sir, uh, I, I agree with Paul. You do. Of course you do. Sir, I guess, uh... In my opinion, uh, Paul is trying to say like we have to be, you know, sure about what we are doing. Yes. If we're doing it, no, yeah. if we're doing it for someone else, uh, like to show someone or to please someone, then it it is of no benefit. Yes, and that's that's a really good point. If you do it and you feel guilty about doing it, don't do it. That's all right. It's okay. Yeah. Isn't this amazing though? Because you would never hear Moses say this. This is not something that Moses would say. But this, and that's not because Moses was wrong. It's because Moses <laughs> was creating law. God was creating laws, giving them to Moses. And God was giving laws for the Hebrews in first in the wilderness and then in the promised land. Laws, the purpose of the laws was to give them things that they would have to obey in order to stay in the land. Hmm. Not, not as far as eternal righteousness goes. It's not as far as whether God's going to hear their prayers. It's not whether God is going to bless them. It's, that's not what the purpose of the law, the laws were. They were not eternal laws. They were laws. They were all righteous laws. But they, were not, they were not how I get righteousness. The laws of Moses are not how I become saved. It's not how I enter into the kingdom of God. The laws of Moses are about how I stay in the land. Now, or sir, yes. Or sir, law can um, uh, would also be like um, you know to make them made them civil. They were not uh, as you know civil as a nation. They were slaves and stuff. So I guess law was also strict and you know tough for them to make them make them civil. Yes, lots and lots and lots of the laws. Like for example, laws about if somebody kills somebody. Okay, those laws are not about what. I should do as a Christian. It's about what you need to do when you have two and a half million people who are living together. Well, then you have to worry about punishing people who commit murder or punishing people who steal or punishing people who injure others, right? So it's these laws in Moses' law are to, like I like the way you said it, to keep people civil, to keep the, the people under control. And they're righteous laws, they're wonderful laws, but they're not laws. Like if somebody commits murder, it's not my responsibility to execute that person. That's, that's, that's not what the laws there. I mean, in other words, that law is really for Israel when they were living in the land. Yeah. Therefore, don't let anyone judge you, and this is a bizarre statement, don't let anyone judge you in regard to food and drink or in the matter of a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. That's interesting. 
And he, when he says, don't let them judge you, this goes back to what Isaac just said, that if a person does it because they, and they feel guilty when they do it, they shouldn't do it. Don't let people judge you if they say, well, you know, you really, you really shouldn't be, you know, working on a Sabbath day and they're judging you for it. What Paul's saying, don't let them do that. If you feel that it's not wrong to work on the Sabbath day, then work on the Sabbath day. Don't let other people pressurize you. Don't do it. I mean, don't let them pressurize you. That's what he's saying. Don't let anyone judge you. And that's what it says in the Greek, by the way, too. So don't let people, and it actually says, don't let people keep on judging you, keep on pressurizing you. Well, that's interesting. And he says specifically a Sabbath day. And then notice verse 17, a really surprising verse. He says, these, new moon, food, drink, Sabbath day, these are a shadow of what was to come. The substance is the Messiah. So he's saying that the Sabbath day is a shadow of what is to come. What is the Sabbath day a shadow of? What, what, it says that the Sabbath day is a shadow of what is to come. So what is he talking about? How is the, sh the Sabbath day a shadow of what is to come? I guess he's talking about the rest or the Jesus will give you peace or rest. In that sense, Messiah will give you peace. And Sabbath is for the relaxing of man to praise God and wow. be relaxed in that day. I just realized I had my fan on. Sorry about that. That's very profound. Very profound indeed. Jadun, what is the rest? He's, well, what is the substance? He says the Sabbath is the shadow. And Isaac says that the substance is the rest that we find in Christ. And he's right. He is definitely right. But we want more than that. What else is this, this? The Sabbath is the shadow. What is to come is the substance. What is to come that will be like the Sabbath? So is he like talking about Jesus? Tell me about that. Tell me more. Tell me more about that. Sir, I'm like thinking. Is this too hard on Monday to be thinking like this? Is this just too painful? Yes. Still thinking? Yes, sir. Martina. Yes, sir. Tell me, what does this verse mean? Uh, so the substance is the Messiah. Uh, the main thing of this whole, the reason behind this creation and everything, and after the sin has come to the earth, uh, this main substance is the Christ. And everything other than that, the drinking part, the eating part, the festivals, and the Sabbath itself, is just the shadow of it. It's not that important. Because if you have Christ, and after the Christ has come, when, when Jesus was walking around, uh, he, he changed the laws, uh, because the law of the Moses was not enough, and it was just shadow. And when Jesus was here, he added things to it. He added more meaning to it. So he was the main substance. That's excellent. Let me add something to that, which does not contradict anything you said. Okay, so should we just think about this, all right? All three of you. You already know that the sacrifices in the Old Testament are the shadow and Christ is the substance. He's the real sacrifice. So if you just had an animal sacrificing without Jesus dying on the cross, you're going to hell. Your sins aren't forgiven. You can't forgive sins by using the blood of a goat or a bull. It doesn't take away your sin. It's, it's, 
The, the only purpose of the Old Testament sacrifice is to prepare for coming of Christ. So it's a shadow. The reality is Jesus. If Jesus didn't die on the cross, sacrificing a goat or a bull or a sheep or a lamb, it wouldn't do you any good at all. Without Jesus, without his blood, the blood of the sacrifice is meaningless. So they're shadows. Okay, another one. Priests. All right. The priests come into the presence of God. The priests bring the sacrifices. The priests um, pray on behalf of the people. Uh, the priests offering offerings to God. They're a shadow. They're not really coming to the presence of God. They can't because they're sinners. Who really comes into the presence of God? Jesus. Jesus is called our true high priest. The book of Hebrews is all about Jesus as our true high priest. He's the real priest. The priests in the Old Testament were shadows. Temple. The temple isn't really the dwelling place of God. Jesus is the dwelling place of God. He's the real presence of God. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. But he was talking about the temple of his body. He's the real temple. He's the real priest. He's the real sacrifice. He's the real temple. He's the real festivals. Every single festival. Passover. They celebrated Passover every year. Every year is the most important celebration. Every single year they've celebrated Passover. Jews still celebrate Passover. But for Jews who celebrate the Passover today, it's really sad. Because when Jews celebrate the Passover today, this is really sad they are not really celebrating the Passover because Jesus has come already. If you celebrate the Passover without Jesus, the Passover is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Why? Because he's the true Passover. Paul calls Jesus in 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 10, he says that our Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He's our Passover. Of course, of course we know that. So you see, all of the Old Testament religion was a shadow. It, it was real for them while they were doing it, but it didn't really take away sin. The priest didn't really enter into God's presence. Um, the, the Passover lamb wasn't really protecting them from the angel of death. It was Jesus who was protecting them from the angel of death. It was Jesus who was our true high priest who goes into the very presence of God. It is Jesus who is the true temple, who is the dwelling place of God. It is Jesus. And so the Sabbath is like those things. The Sabbath is real, but it's just a real shadow. The reality is Jesus. If you want to find true rest, you find it by putting your faith in Jesus. If you want to find true peace, you find it by putting your faith in Jesus. He is the true Sabbath, the true rest. So that's what Paul is doing here. Does that make sense? So you see then what's going on with the Sabbath then is Jesus can say the Sabbath is made for man. Why? Because the Sabbath is a shadow. The reality is Jesus Christ. When Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law, but fulfill it. Now, all of a sudden, it makes sense. Because now, all of a sudden, we realize that Jesus himself is the Sabbath. And so if you obey the Sabbath, but you reject Jesus, you get nothing. You have no Sabbath. You have no rest. If you disobey the Sabbath, but you receive Jesus, then you have the true Sabbath because you have Jesus. That's why Paul says, if one person celebrates the Sabbath and another person doesn't celebrate the Sabbath, it makes no difference. Just be fully convinced in your own mind. Why? Because Jesus is the true Sabbath. And if a Christian has Jesus, she or he is already celebrating the true Sabbath. Does that sort of make sense? So now all of a sudden the Old Testament laws, they become different because now all of a sudden we begin realizing that a lot of the Old Testament laws, Jesus fulfills those laws. And you can't get the benefit of the law without having Jesus in your heart. You can't get the benefit of the law without having Jesus because you can't have a real Sabbath if you don't have the real Jesus. Because there is no Sabbath without Jesus. The shadows do no good. 
It's the substance that matters. Jesus is the substance. So any questions about this incredibly difficult concept? Sir, I guess I will, it's not a question, just an opinion. Ke, mm. Like Jesus is the true fulfillment of law. Jesus was the only one to truly and you know completely fulfill the law. No one can ever fulfill the law that it is written in the scripture that if you break one law, you have broken all the law, all the rules and all the, the you know commandments. But Jesus only fulfilled it and made it you know complete. That's excellent. You said it perfectly. It made it complete. That's excellent. Which means that the way you fulfill the law is by trusting in Jesus. Which yes. is why Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Give you rest. Because it's in Jesus. It's not in it's not in us, it's not in the law, it's not in our obedience, it's in Jesus. That's why it's faith. It's not faith because, and it was always faith. It's faith because it's all about Jesus. That's the whole thing. So did Sharun go that way or did he just go straight up? Did he just get raptured? I thought he saw him go, he went, oh, okay, went that way, okay, good. I was scared, Sharun. I, I thought you'd gotten raptured. It was just really worrying me. Okay, so any other comments or questions or opinions or thoughts or concerns? No, sir. So, Martinez, does this make no, sense to you? Yeah, it does make sense. And uh, as far as you've told us that the, the law and the commands of the Moses that were in the past were to stay in the land. And when Jesus came, it was for the heavenly kingdom. So it, the substance is Messiah. That's all I have understood. So it's good. And um, are we still supposed to follow the rules and all, the laws of Moses to stay in this land? This land does matter or not? This is an that the promised land was matter. Question. So what we need to do is talk about it on Wednesday. Okay. Because we, we, we're, we've done with our class today. So we will talk about that on Wednesday. So, Sharun, are you okay? Yes, sir, I'm okay. So I am so glad you joined us. And will you join us also on Wednesday because we're going to answer Martina's question. And it's a really, yes, really important question, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Do we have an assignment for today? Uh, I'm taking this video and I'm putting it online and I'm, I'm making like an eight or nine minute summary of today's class and I'm putting that online and we will have a midterm and it will be based on all of my summaries. And so I'll, I will put these summaries together in the next couple of days by God's grace. If he would be so merciful to help me do that. And I'll make sure it's fair but the summaries will explain each class. So what I'll do is I'll give the class first, I'll put the class online, and then I'll also put like an eight to nine minute summary of the class, <clears throat> verbal, online, and then you'll sort of be able to review that, take notes from it, and kind of figure out where to go from there. Plus, okay? So no, go on to you, sir. If you want sir? to be started, yes. Okay. Did you say midterm? Yes, I did. But you said we won't have any. Well, what do, how are you getting our grades? I don't know. You said we'll have to submit something. We'll have two quiz and summaries of something. Ah, yeah, same thing as the quiz. The midterm and the quiz is the same, same thing. I'm American. Just two quizzes, you said. Two quizzes. That's great. One time, one time in a couple of weeks from now, and one time at the end of the semester. Okay. The third one will be... Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Americans don't really use the word quiz the way Pakistanis use. For us, it's an examination. Okay. So God bless you all. Be warm and be filled. We'll see you on Wednesday by the grace of God. Okay. Sir.